In this video, we'll work through the development of the nth degree Taylor polynomial for a function f about x equals 0. Then we'll generalize this. We'll begin with the general form of our polynomial of interest. t sub n of x, meaning the nth degree Taylor polynomial, equals a sub 0 plus a sub 1x plus a sub 2x squared plus a sub 3x cubed plus all the way up to our nth degree term, a sub n x to the n, where k, a sub k are real numbers for any k greater than or equal to zero. Now, we remember that linear approximations of functions near a point were generated by matching both the function value and the slope at a certain point with the line we're generating. These lines gave us approximations of the function of interest, but the approximations were only good very close to the point of interest, as we can see in this following graph. Suppose we take a look at some function f, and I generate my linear approximation off of x sub 0. This linear approximation is good in some neighborhood around x sub 0, but we wouldn't want to use it to predict values or approximate the function far away from x sub 0. What if we could enhance the accuracy of this approximation? How would we do this? Well, what if we, in addition to matching the function value and slope at a certain point with the approximating polynomial, we match the concavity of the function as well? This would mean that we want the second derivative of the polynomial to match that of the function at the specified point. Expanding on this idea, we match the first n derivatives of our function with that of the polynomial we're generating. We find the following. We would match f of 0 to that of the nth degree Taylor polynomial at 0, which is a sub 0. We'd match the first derivative of f at 0 with the first derivative of the Taylor polynomial at 0, which we see is a sub 1. Matching the second derivative of f at 0 and that of the nth degree Taylor polynomial at 0, we obtain 2a sub 2. Now I've written that also as 2 factorial a sub 2, which will, which will be explained in a moment. Matching the third derivative of f at 0 with the third derivative of the nth degree Taylor polynomial at 0, which we find is 3 times 2 a sub 3, and I've written that also as 3 factorial a sub 3, we find that we have a, some, some form of a pattern in these terms. The nth derivative of f at 0 matched with the nth derivative of the nth degree Taylor polynomial at 0 turns out to be n factorial a sub n. We can then solve for the coefficients of t sub n of x, and we find that a sub 0 is equal to f of 0, a sub 1 is equal to first derivative of f at 0, a sub 2 is second derivative of f at 0 divided by 2 factorial. a sub 3 is the third derivative of f at 0 divided by 3 factorial, and so on. And our general term is the nth derivative of f at 0 divided by n factorial. So the nth degree Taylor polynomial centered at x equals 0 is as follows. And in general form, we see that the, the sum from 0 to, in, to n of the kth derivative of f at 0 divided by k factorial x to the k is our nth degree Taylor polynomial about x equals 0. To generalize further, we can think about the Taylor polynomial for a function about any point x equals x naught. Using the same process as we did here, we would find that this polynomial would be t sub n of x equals f of x sub 0 plus f prime of x sub 0 
times x minus x naught. And note this would be our linear approximation. Expanding on that, our quadratic term is second derivative of f at x naught divided by 2 factorial times x minus x naught squared, and so on, all the way up to the nth term. And we can write this in summation form as the sum from k equals 0 to an n of the kth derivative of f at x naught divided by k factorial times x minus x naught to the k. Okay.